the bill. So thank you for speaking. Marama Davis. Mr Speaker, the Green Party will support the Healthy Homes Guarantee Bill from my colleague Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, this bill is to amend the Residential Tenancies Act 1986 because the standards are just not good enough. Now, Mr Speaker, it's quite clear that this government, which has been in power, which has had the tools available to it to fix the current situation, did not fix the current situation. The standards have not been good enough for far too long. And that is why so many of our rental properties today have been making children sick over and over again and have been responsible for causing annual winter deaths of our people. So, Mr Speaker, we need to do better. And Andrew Little's bill, the Healthy Homes Guarantee Bill, proposes exactly that. And I want to en enforce what my colleague Metidia Today has said when she says, how dare the government lecture us? How dare the government lecture us that they are doing a good job to fix things? Because it's 2017. You've been in power for nine years, and last year you finally decide to put a bill through government, and it's a stink one. You finally decide to put some standards through, and the standards go actually it is stink because mould in rental properties is stink and smelly. And more rental properties have mould than private properties, surprise, surprise. So it's a stink bill that you put through because the standards that the minister, Nick Smith, put through went back to the 70s. I mean, we all like to go back to the 70s, but not when it comes to making sure our homes are healthy. The standards need to be 2017, not 1978. So, Mr Speaker, I did come to Parliament on an understanding that we would do everything we can. Now, the standard has to be that our people, our children, our elderly people, our citizens can live in rental properties and their health is not at all compromised. And we in Aotearoa New Zealand can afford that. We have enough. We have enough to make sure that our people are adequately housed. We cannot afford to continue with standards that keep making our children sick. We actually cannot afford that. So, Mr Speaker, I do take some offence at the constant raising of the issue from the government side of the House, where they keep saying, how will we afford it? We cannot afford the current situation, not financially and not morally. So, Mr Speaker, oh gosh, there was just too many things. So, we know what's happening. 40,000, 42,000 children's admissions to hospital on preventable diseases. What country is this? 1,600 deaths caused by inadequate housing. What country is this? Nine years they've had to fix this. Nine years, and last year they put through a shoddy bill. Now, Mr Speaker, so our standards need to be better, and this bill is a good start, but also the standards need better enforcement. And I want to go back to one of the submissions, uh, and it does relate to this bill, but one of the submissions for the government's bill where the standards are not good enough for the residential tenancies amendment stuff that the government put through last year. One of the submissions that will stay with me was from the Sisters of Mercy, from Sister Anne Hurley, who was very, very clear that the people, the families that she advocates for uh, when it comes to poor properties, poor rental housing, are afraid of making a noise. They're afraid of taking anything to the tenancy tribunal. They're afraid of raising an issue to the landlord. Now, do we understand why? Do we here in this privileged house understand why? Because it's too much living on the edge, knowing that you could be kicked out just for raising the issue. So we will be supporting this bill. We need to have standards that save lives and stop sickness. And we need better enforcement of the standards. Standards are nothing if tenants feel afraid to say anything about the mould that is coming through the wall. Come on, government. Come on, this House of Representatives. Let's represent. Thank you, Mr Speaker.
Mr. Speaker. Dr. Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I.